Welcome. Today we are going to talk about how to analyze shafts for deflection. Recently we've talked about how to analyze shafts for stress analysis and also for fatigue, uh, but those are not the only things we need to consider in shaft design. We also need to think about deflection. So, for example, if we have a shaft here, looking at a side view, maybe it's supported by some bearings, and suppose we have a gear on the end of the shaft, and if it's meshed with another gear, the teeth are pressing down right at this point as it transmits torque, causing a force on the end of this cantilever. And then we would expect deflection that looks like this. Now there are two things we really need to be concerned about with deflection, both the radial deflection and the angular deflection. What I mean by radial deflection is in the radial direction of the shaft. So for example, if we are applying a force at the gear and we push down, then we're going to displace this gear downward some amount, and that's in the radial direction of the shaft. And if it's displaced, displaced too far, it could cause certain types of problems. But then we also I uh, want to be concerned with the angular deflection at certain points as well. Most bearings have a limit on how much angular deflection is allowed. So say if we have a bearing right there and we have some amount of deflection or the shaft is at an angle, it's not perfectly straight, that can cause problems for bearings. There are certain types of bearings called self-aligning bearings that are more tolerant of angular deflection, but any bearing is going to have some type of limit on how much angular deflection it can handle before reducing the life of the bearing. So angular deflection, that's important for bearings. So pay attention to what the angular deflection is at locations where we have bearing support. And then radial deflection, that's going to be important wherever we have gears or pulleys. And then also any place where deflection might cause some kind of interference. If the deflection of the shaft might cause it to rub up against something else. That's another element of this. So another important thing to be concerned with, or just to understand, is that with stress analysis, this was a very local phenomenon we really only needed to know what the internal moment was at a particular point. We could focus on criti lo critical locations, such as stress concentrations, grooves or shoulders in the shaft, uh, or points where the internal moment was really high. In contrast, deflection, this is really a global phenomenon. And we'll see a little bit more why this is the case as we go through this, uh, uh, these examples on shaft deflection. So here, shafts really behave like beams. And you've, you've already learned a lot about analyzing the deflection and stress inside of beams. And so a lot of this is going to look familiar. So when we think about the deflection of a shaft, it's going to have some kind of curved shape. So let's suppose we have a shaft where maybe it's supported by a set of bearings on one end, and it has some radial force pushing down, we're going to have a deflection that looks something like that. And then this is going to be very similar to a cantilever beam, which you've analyzed before. If we have a force at the end of a cantilever beam, this beam takes on some shape. So more precisely, 
if x tells us where we are on the beam or the shaft, we are interested in finding out how far the shaft or beam displaces. And we can quantify that using this function y of x. So we're interested in finding out what y of x is. If we can find y of x, we can find both the radial displacement, which is y of x, and then we can also find the angular displacement, which is related to the slope of y of x. So we are interested in first formulating an ordinary differential equation that can help us to model and solve the deflection of shafts. And if you're interested, you might want to go back to section 4-3 for more information. So earlier in class, we covered a differential equation for buckling. And this is actually very different from the buckling differential equation. So let's go through this. You've probably seen this before. If capital V represents shear, then we can say the internal shear of a beam, or in this case, a shaft, is equal to Young's modulus times the area moment of inert inertia times the third derivative of y of x. Again, y describes the displacement of the beam or the shaft in the radial direction. OK, you might remember also that the derivative of the internal moment of a beam with respect to position is equal to shear. So if we were to integrate this differential equation based on shear just once with respect to position, then we will obtain a formula involving the moment. And so the moment then is equal to e times i times y double prime. Something to point out about either form of this equation that is important is that this is quite different from the form of the differential equation that we saw in buckling analysis earlier in class. With buckling analysis, we had more than one term involving a differential. And so here we only have one differential term. And then that means it's easy to solve this differential equation. We can just use integration. So the basic approach here in solving this to find the curve for a deflected beam is to first derive a formula for the internal moment as a function of x. And then we can just integrate to obtain the solution y of x. And this solution helps us in several different ways. It gives us directly what the radial deflection of the shaft is. And as I mentioned earlier, the angular deflection is related to the slope of y of x. So in other words, if theta is the angu angular deflection of a shaft at a given point, that is approximately equal to the spatial derivative of y of x. So that's the term that we can use to determine whether we have exceeded the limit on angular deflection for a given bearing. So let's go through an example. Suppose we have, again, this case with a shaft that's supported by two bearings on the end. So this is very similar to a cantilever beam. And we have some radial force, F sub r, that's pushing down at the end of the shaft. And the length of the shaft is equal to L. First, let's have a look at the shear diagram. We're going to have a constant shear in this case, f of r, and it's going to be a positive shear right here at L. And then if we want to derive the moment diagram, remember we just need to integrate the shear diagram. So we really want to find the moment as a function of x. And if we do this integration, this is what we will see.
this is the formula for the moment as a function of x. And again, remember that shear is the spatial derivative of the moment. So if we were then to draw the moment diagram, this is what we would see.